Right now at 6 o'clock, tragedy at Michigan State University. Three people are dead and several hurt after a gunman opened fire. We'll tell you what we've learned about the suspected shooter this morning. Governor Lamont is expected to announce efforts to reduce violent crime across Connecticut. In just a few minutes, we'll share who's joining him in this effort. There are calls to extend help for all of Connecticut's immigrants. We'll tell you what advocates are asking lawmakers to do to help people in need when it comes to Husky health coverage. And a man gone without a trace. And eight years later, his daughters are still searching for answers. Ahead at 6.30, what they're doing and their message as they seek closure. Fox 61's Jen Bernstein explains. All local, all morning. This is Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. Good morning. Happy Valentine's Day. Thanks so much for choosing the Fox 61 Morning News at 6. I'm Erica Arias. And I'm Tim Lammers. Good morning to you guys. Happy Valentine's Day. In case you want to get out, maybe have some lunch or some dinner with your significant other. We're going to start with the forecast. And I think looking all good. things considered, Matt Scott, looking pretty good. At yes. the rate we're going, we can have that meal outside. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's what Tim was saying. It's a little breezy, but Why other not? than that, a beautiful day. Lunchtime outside with, you know. I, I, absolutely. And into the evening, things are going to be fine as well. Good to have you along on this Tuesday. Happy Valentine's Day. We've got warm hearts for the day. Stray shower coming in early tomorrow morning. Pay no mind to that. There's a better opportunity rain coming in Friday. But look at this warm, warmer, warmest temperatures that we've seen around here uh, coming your way in just a few. We'll talk about that coming up. Here's a look at the temperatures. 43 degrees in Hartford, 44 New Haven, 43 in Groton. I told you it was going to be mild this morning. Temperatures already above the normal highs. True to form for this winter. Uh, satellite radar picture showing you just a little bit of uh, cloud coverage, mainly off to the north earlier in the evening, long gone. And uh, we have clear skies out there now with still a, a good breeze uh, coming out of the north and west today. So 39 degrees and clear skies now, 49 later on. And as I just showed you, many of you are already in the 40s. So I think we'll make another good run at the lower 50s today. We'll talk about those warm temperatures and when we get a bit of a reality check stand by that's coming up in a few minutes. Let's see what's going on on the roads. A reality check or smooth sailing? Here's Lauren Zensi. Smooth sailing as of right now. Happy Valentine's to you, you. Matt. Likewise. Happy Valentine's Day, everybody. Hopefully you're having a great morning so far. Thanks to our morning show producer, Skylar, for these uh, candy heart earrings. I'm not very fashionable, so thanks to her for that. <laughs> for that little extra pop of Valentine's Day love. We do have a crash over in the Norwalk area on the northbound side of I-95, right between exit 16 and 17. It is just a tractor trailer that is over in the right-hand shoulder. They have closed the right lane just to make sure that everyone is navigating that crash safely. In the Hartford area, 9184 Route 2, all moving smoothly as we take a live look out in the capital city. Some moderate volume over on that southbound side of I-91, northbound moving smooth into the capital city, down in New Haven, 91 over 95 looking great as we move things along into the Bridgeport area. We're starting to see that volume really ramp up on the southbound side of I-95. We'll check in again on the roads coming up at 630. For now, Tim and Eric, I'll send things over to you. Lauren, thanks so much. Well, following breaking news this morning out of East Lansing, Michigan, three people are dead, five are injured in a shooting at Michigan State University. Yeah, Fox 61 Symphony Privet is in the breaking news center with the latest on what happened. Symphony, good morning. And good morning, Tim and Erica. Authorities releasing some new details overnight, and we now know a 43-year-old man believed to be the suspect in that shooting is also dead this morning. Police say he shot himself just off campus after an hours-long manhunt. Now, take a look at this video here. Uh, we do not know a potential motive behind this shooting, but here's what we do know so far this morning. A Michigan State University officials say there is no longer a threat to the campus. Three people were killed in the shootings. Five others were injured. Authorities say the shootings began in an academic building known as Berkey Hall, and there was another incident nearby at the U MSU Union, that is. All this morning, the name of the suspected gunman has not been released, but police say he was not a student or employee and had no affiliation with Michigan State. Our hearts are with those who have been affected by this senseless act of violence. Giving an update like this is never easy. As a father, I can only imagine how parents are feeling right now. This will be the beginning of a long healing process for everyone who has been affected. 
Interim Deputy Chief Rosman also said that out of respect for the families of the victims, they will not be releasing their identities. Now, of course, we'll stay on top of this, this uh, developing story this morning coming out of East Lansing, Michigan, tracking the latest details. And we'll bring that to you on air, online, and on the Fox 61 News app. Back to you. All right, Tiffany, thank thanks. you. And today marks five years since the deadly shooting at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School in Parkland, Florida. 14 students and three staff members were killed by a gunman. Since then, families of those killed have worked to keep their memories alive. Some, like 14-year-old Gina Montalto's family, creating a scholarship foundation, a foundation to help students accomplish their dreams. Happening today, Governor Ned Lamont is going to announce a series of legislation aimed at reducing violent crime. Yeah, Brooke Griffin is live at the Capitol this morning with more on who is joining him. Brooke, good morning. <laughs> Well, good morning to you both. This is just one of several measures the governor has announced during this specific legislative session that tackles gun violence and violent crime both. But today is a little different. Today is going to be standing alongside several Connecticut mayors that say they all have his back on this one. Now today at 1:30, the governor in partnership with the Connecticut Conference of Municipalities will join Hartford Mayor Luke Bronin, New Haven Mayor Justin Elliker, several other mayors families impacted by violent crime and community advocates to announce legislation that would decrease the rate of violent crime and gun use here in Connecticut. Lamont says this series of legislation is designed by the mayors and offers practical solutions to reduce violent crime in urban centers both now and in the future. The Connecticut Conference of Municipalities started a task force last fall with a mission of increasing accountability for repeat offenders involved in gun violence specifically. This announcement reflects the task force's final recommendation recommendations for the legislature. This is a topic we've seen Lamont talk about since the beginning of his time as, as governor. He has proposed several pieces of legislation every year that would lower violence crime rates in the state and get guns off the street. Now again, that announcement is at 1.30 this afternoon. We will have a reporter there that will also be bringing you the full story of what the mayors and the governor has to say coming up this evening. Live in Hartford, Brooke Ruffin, Fox 61 News, Connecticut's news station. All right, Brooke, thank you for that report. It is uh, 6.07 on this Tuesday, and happening today, healthcare advocates and providers are calling for an expansion of Husky health coverage for immigrants. Well, Fox News One's Angelo Bavaro is joining us live right outside the Legislative Office building in Hartford with more on this expansion proposal. Angelo, good morning. Erica, Tim, good morning, and this is just the latest rally that we have seen around this issue. Now, the goal of that group that is meeting this morning they want the state to expand the Husky program so that it covers all immigrants, regardless of their status. A press conference is scheduled this morning around this issue and then a public hearing on some legislation that is also scheduled for today as well. So let's talk about exactly what is in this legislation that is being proposed. That bill that would expand the state's public health coverage program, Husky, to all Connecticut residents up to 25 years old who meet certain eligibility criteria regardless of their immigration status. Now, this bill has been introduced in the Human Services Committee, and more than 220 people have signed up to testify at that public hearing today. This push comes after a recent expansion of Husky. In 2021, that program was expanded to undocumented kids eight and under, as well as pregnant and postpartum people. And then last year, lawmakers also voting to expand that group to kids 12 and younger. But those advocates say that more needs to be done. For example, my friend was diagnosed with anemia. She didn't have insurance and didn't go for treatment because she couldn't afford to pay. After a year, without following the doctor's instructions, she died of leukemia. And there are many cases like hers. Many of us use home remedies and don't go to the doctor because we cannot pay. And that press conference with the advocates that is scheduled for 9 o'clock this morning, the public hearing on the legislation that is scheduled for 11 o'clock this morning. Reporting live in the capital city, I'm Angelo Bavar, Fox 61, Connecticut's news station.